Hello all! In this video, we'll see how to set personal goals using OKRs. Three steps to use OKRs for personal goals. The first step is to set the right goals. The second step is to track the goal and finish the plan. And the final step is to review your goals and plans. Before understanding these three steps, let's first see what OKRs actually are. OKR is an acronym for Objectives and Key Results. The OKR framework is broken down into an objective that inspires action, key results that measure progress towards that objective, and initiatives that allow the key results to come to execution. OKR objectives can be simply defined as where, how, and what. Now let's see what a KPI is. KPI stands for Key Performance Indicators. A KPI is a quantifiable measure used to evaluate the success of an organization, projects, programs, products, and other initiatives. Let's quickly compare KPIs and OKRs. KPIs are measurable values used to evaluate the progress of an individual or organization against some desired results. OKR is a collaborative framework used by both individuals and teams to achieve their desired results. KPI goals are typically obtainable and represent the output of a process or project already in place, while OKR goals are more aggressive and ambitious. Now let's see how to set the right goals. The acronym SMART is used to help guide goal setting. SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Realistic, and Timely. Therefore, a SMART goal incorporates all of these criteria to help focus your efforts and increase the chances of achieving your goal. 1. The objectives must be specific. Setting a SMART goal should not be ambiguous. Rather, it must have a clear and concise objective to which it can be set. When setting a goal, be specific about what you want to achieve. 2. Goals must be measurable. Establish the criteria for measuring your progress while you work towards your goal. 3. Goals have to be attainable. When you identify your goal and determine how you're going to achieve your goal, you see how attainable it is and how much effort it will require. 4. Must be realistic. In order to be realistic, your goal should represent an objective toward which you are willing and able to work. 5. Have to be time-bound. All goals should be kept within a well-detailed time frame. Now let's see how we can use mind map to divide the goals into key results and key actions. Here's the mind map of the to-do list. The objective has been broken down into key results, and the key results in turn have been divided into key actions. To understand the mind map in detail, let's take an example. Students plan for senior year. To achieve this objective, six different tasks have been identified along with detailed key actions. The six key tasks are study, healthcare, work, family, daily life, and others. How to track the goals. Goals can be tracked easily with the help of a Gantt chart. You can track the goal progress, identify necessary tasks, mark task priority, etc. This is the most widely used tool as it has a visual, graphical representation of the tasks. Now, with the help of the same example, the plan for senior year, let's see how to create a Gantt chart using Mind Map. Select the task and click on Add Tasks under the Task tab and click on Create a Gantt Chart from Mind Map. The date can be edited through the Start and Finish columns. It can also be edited by changing the days in the Duration column. The third way to edit the date is through the Task Information tab. And you can also move the whole bar to change the start and finish dates. This is a Gantt chart of the study task. To create a Gantt chart of the complete mind map, click on Add All Task Info and here you can see the Gantt chart has been created. Time management quadrants can also be used to track the goal. 
It is Stephen Covey's approach for effective time management to create time to focus on important things before they become urgent. The real skill is to commit time to processes that enable you to do things more quickly or more easily, or ensure that these are done automatically. Let's understand this further. In the first quadrant are tasks that are important and urgent. These are things such as crises, emergencies, or deadlines. In the second quadrant are tasks that are important but not urgent. This is where one should focus and spend time on planning to complete the task effectively. In the third quadrant are tasks that are not important but urgent. We tend to focus on matters that are urgent without understanding the importance of the task. In the last quadrant are the tasks that are not important and not urgent. It is important to identify which tasks belong to this quadrant so you know which tasks to classify as the lowest priority. How to review your goals. You can use mind map to review your goals. Let's retrospect a mind map for the same. The set goals here objectively assess if your actual work tasks and goals are in alignment. Was the targeted task enough to reach the goal? Some goals, by their very nature, take longer to achieve, so it's important to review your progress from time to time to make sure that you're actually moving forward and not just going around in circles. There are five major steps to review your goals. Retrospective, review goal, compare outcomes, review process, self-analysis, conclusion. At the end to retrospect the above conclusion. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos.